This season was supposed to be something special for UT Dallas basketball player Curtis Allen. It was supposed to be the final season of Allen's four-year career with the Comets. It was supposed to be his last chance to play alongside four other senior teammates he'd grown to love in his time at UTD. And it was supposed to be his last opportunity to put on a uniform and represent his school, playing the game that he loved. But seven minutes into the very first game of Curtis Allen's senior season, everything came to an alarming halt. Curtis had actually got a rebound and passed it to me, and I took a few dribbles and passed it to Jalen, and Jalen went up the court and got fouled. And I was like kind of high-fiving Jalen and stuff, and he was about to shoot his free throws, and I turned around because I heard like some noises in the background, like the crowd was starting to uh, scream a little bit. And I turned around and I see him um, backpedal a couple steps and then just fall down and hit his head on the um, ground. I look and here comes Curtis walking right at me and he's got his hand held up in the air like, hey, I need a stub. And he just looked like he was gassed to me, which, uh, you know, as a coach, you want your kids to play so hard that they can't go more than six or seven minutes, you know. And, you know, as he started to walk a little closer, he just, he just, uh, he just dropped and uh, he sort of went into a tailspin and tried to keep his balance and he just dropped right in front of me. And as soon as I came down, my vision started going black, and I walked towards the bench to ask for a sub. Well, they said I asked for a sub, but I don't remember asking for a sub. So, at five seconds, I was blacked out. I looked back because the refs stopped the game for some reason, and um, I looked back and I saw Kurt um, on the ground, collapsed, who was collapsed. And I started yelling at the trainers to come get Kurt because he started to look like he was having a seizure. I remember being behind our bench like I usually am, and all of a sudden there was a commotion on the UT Dallas bench, and for some reason, um, something just didn't feel right. And so, all of a sudden people were motioning for me, my student said, Sarah and I started full on sprint over to the other side. So when I got there and realized that Curtis was down and he was unresponsive. I realized how serious it was when he stopped breathing. And that's when they had to get the, the AED machine out. I really thought he was just having like a heat stroke because it was just like hot in the gym. But like when he stopped breathing, that's how I knew it was like really serious. His mom and dad were there. Obviously, they were in great distress. And, and then when, when the AED pronounced that he needed to be shocked, that's when it sort of really came, came home to roost to me that uh, this was no ordinary situation. And I just remember... Kurt's mom just uh, panicking like any, any other mom would do at that moment in time because she was right behind our, our bench and saw him uh, just collapse on the ground. Once I seen the, um, all the medical attention that he was getting and the paramedics and the reaction from his mom, especially behind in the stands because she was right behind the bench, that's when I started to really take in like the severity of the situation. I panicked a little bit. I was definitely scared for Curtis. I actually had to walk out of the gym. I had to go to the locker room while like some people were still out there because I just couldn't keep watching it. The athletic training staff at the University of the Redlands acted quickly, performing both CPR and utilizing an AED device to restart Curtis's heart rhythm until paramedics could arrive. Boy, when the, uh, well, when the AED said stand clear and we all stood clear, you know, as, as happens in the training, you know, and then that shock hits, uh, uh, I, was, I was jolted, uh, no pun intended, by the shock because it literally lifted him right off the ground. And in the meantime, she got right down there with the staff and she uh, uh, started to perform CPR with the chest compressions and the breasts and things like that. And, you know, still he didn't breathe from, from my recollection he did not breathe as a result of that first shock but then the AED came back and said uh, no further shock warranted and as fate would have it the opposing coach Jim Ducey who turned out to be a, a, a great resource uh, was down there with us well as it turns out uh, he has children 
who have had uh, heart issues. And uh, he had grabbed Curtis's wrist and uh, he was very cool, calm and collected and he pronounced that there was a pulse and you know, he was sort of involved in this thing, which is really an amazing thing when you think that of all the places in the United States we could be, we're in this particular gym with this particular coach who has experience with us. I just remember waking up, looking around me, and then I f figured something went wrong. So I just started apologizing because it seemed like a dramatic thing to have 12 people around me. And I saw my mom crying, so I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then the next thing I remember, he just started to apologize profusely. Coach, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I'm just so sorry. And I'm like, will you shut up? Uh, you know, don't be sorry about anything. I'm just glad that you're back with us. Curtis was transported to a nearby hospital where he underwent six days of testing to determine the cause of the seizure, the extent of the damage, and treatment. After the game, we hurried up, got dressed, and we immediately went to the hospital. We didn't even eat food or anything, we just went straight to the hospital. I said, geez, you know, the, the, the guys are all here, they'd really like to see you. I, you know, I, I thought it was a two-way street. I thought that it would be a good idea if they could say a few words to Curtis lending support, but I think they all needed to see him also, and uh, for peace of mind. We just saw Curtis hooked up. I mean, he was laying on the bed, he was talking, you know. You definitely could tell he was down, and he was hurting for sure. But um, we definitely brought like a little smile to his face when he saw this. I remember when I was at the hospital, me, Jill, and the next one back there first. And uh, it was just regular Kurt being his uh, normal goofy self, but he was he was a little worried because he didn't know why he collapsed on the court. I was pretty worried about my parents because I had never seen them like that. And, you know, I was pretty nervous about myself, but I figured everything would be all right. I knew, I just, I just wanted to get out of there. A week after the incident, Curtis returned to campus. He was welcomed back by his teammates and coaches. Though his playing career has ended, Curtis Allen is still very much a part of the Comets basketball team. It was a lot of love, a lot of love. I was excited to see everybody. Everybody was pretty worried. Everybody showed me a, you know, they gave me a hug. They were happy to see me. I remember that when he first came back to a UTD and first came to practice, like everyone was so excited to see him. And even to like now, we, every time we see him come to practice, we still get excited. Like, as we know, he can't practice, but just having him there just like impacts us to play harder and stuff. Just all, all smiles and, and jokes from Kurt, because that's, that's all he, that's what he likes to do, especially on the bench. Uh, our last home game, he was uh, getting the guys all rowdy and, and energized off the bench. And he is continuing to be at everything we're doing. Uh, that's that's his that's his group. These these are his people. These these are the guys that he's been to battle with, and. Uh, uh, I, I don't think it can keep him away, nor, nor would you want to. I know it's super tough for him. Um, going into the year, me and him and Jalen and Hans, we're all really excited for our senior year. And I know it really kills him not to be out there because that's what he's worked all summer for, all his career for. It's getting better every game. It's still tough to just sit there and watch. But I mean, these are my brothers. It's fun to watch them go into battle every game. And uh, ultimately, I hope they win the championship because that's the whole reason we're here. Um, I'm really still processing it. It still doesn't really feel real. It just feels like a dream, kind of. But at the end of the day, I have to be thankful that, you know, I got a second chance at life. I can't just keep looking at the negatives.